I'm Brian Pease, Site Manager at the Minnesota State Capitol Historic Site. Minnesota sent 22 military units consisting of infantry regiments, sharpshooters, artillery, and cavalry, about 24,000 men to fight in the Civil War. A lot of those units were in the thick of the fight at Shiloh and Gettysburg, Missionary Ridge, and Nashville, while others had rather limited wartime experiences, but still played a very vital role in protecting railroads in Kentucky and Tennessee. Throughout the state capitol, the efforts of those soldiers is commemorated in dramatic paintings, larger-than-life statues, and a display of battle flags used in the war. In this episode, we take a look at three military units whose collective experience typifies the contributions and sacrifices made in the country's darkest hour. The 2nd Minnesota Volunteer Infantry was organized in July 1861 and sent to Louisville, Kentucky that October. While there, the regiment received this national battle flag as a gift from the Loyal Ladies of Louisville, one of that border state's pro-union groups. The flag is proudly marked for the January 1862 Battle of Mill Springs, Kentucky, where combat was so close that the men of the 2nd Minnesota were poking their guns through the same fence as the Confederate forces. The Union triumphed that day, and Mill Springs was the first significant northern victory of the war. In the stinging defeat of the Union Army at Chickamauga in the fall of 1863, the 2nd Minnesota was one of the last units to leave the field of battle. After that loss, the Union Army retreated into Chattanooga, Tennessee, and was surrounded and was being starved out by the Confederate Army. In the attempt to break out of this precarious situation, the 2nd Minnesota participated in one of the most memorable events of the Civil War on November 25, 1863, at the Battle of Missionary Ridge. Together with 60 other regiments, the 2nd Minnesota made a successful assault on the Confederate rifle pits at the base of the ridge. Having either misunderstood the orders or simply being caught up in the moment, the Union Regiment continued past the first line and charged all the way to the top of the ridge and overwhelmed the defending Confederates. This unexpected and daring event also came at some cost. During this scramble to the top, the 2nd Minnesota had six of its seven color bearers killed or wounded. After Missionary Ridge, the 2nd Minnesota finished out the war as a part of Sherman's March to the Sea and took part in the Union Army's post-war Grand Review in Washington. The regiment was discharged at Fort Snelling on July 20, 1865. The 9th Minnesota Volunteer Infantry was organized at Fort Snelling in August 1862. Rather than heading south, the regiment first went to central and western Minnesota to garrison outposts during the U.S.-Dakota War. The unit then moved around the Civil War's western theater, stationed variously at St. Louis, Kansas City, and Memphis. At the Battle of Guntown, also known as Bryce's Crossroads in June of 1864, it covered the retreat of the shattered Union Army but 200 of its exhausted soldiers were captured. They were sent to prisoner of war camps, including Andersonville Prison. Nearly half of those men never returned back to Minnesota. In July 1864, at the Battle of Tupelo, Mississippi, the regiment lost its colonel, Alexander Wilkin. He was the highest ranking officer from Minnesota to die during the Civil War. On December 15 and 16, 1864, the 9th, along with three other Minnesota regiments, took part in the Battle of Nashville. During its charge at Shias Hill, the regiment was one of the first to reach and plant its colors in the Confederate defenses, a remarkable feat after advancing 400 yards through a muddy cornfield and under fire the entire time. It was the last major engagement in the West and a decisive Union victory and effectively destroyed Confederate forces in Tennessee. The 9th Minnesota spent the war's closing days participating in sieges of Confederate fortifications on Mobile Bay, Alabama. The regiment was discharged at Fort Snelling on August 24, 1865. Minnesota's first battery light artillery was organized in November 1861. The unit went to Tennessee and faced its first test in the Battle of Shiloh on April 6 and 7, 1862. On the 6th, the 1st Battery held a position in the Hornet's Nest, scene of the most intense fighting on the Union line. The men held their position for seven long hours before the Confederates finally pushed through. Federal reinforcements arrived overnight, and the next day the Union prevailed. The 1st Battery went on to see action in the October 3rd and 4th, 1862 Battle of Corinth, Mississippi, 
where the Union triumphed at this crucial railroad junction. The unit later fought at Vicksburg, Mississippi, Kennesaw Mountain, Georgia, and took part in Sherman's march to the sea through Georgia and the Carolinas. In keeping with military protocol, the 1st Battery's unit flag is a vivid red and displays the cross cannon symbolic of the artillery. In addition to the unit's various battle honors, the blue arrow represents the emblem of the 17th Army Corps. The 1st Battery Light Artillery was discharged at Fort Snelling on June 30, 1865. Whether in heated combat or guarding supply lines, Minnesota had an important role on all fronts of the Civil War. 150 years later, we continue to honor their sacrifices. <laughs>